Welcome to Ordinary People Podcast, where we talk to ordinary people with extraordinary stories. And Happy New Year to all my audience, and thank you for joining us for New Year's 2017. New opportunities, new chances to change the things we've done wrong in 2016. You are now tuned in to the Extraordinary Opinion segment of the Ordinary Opinion Podcast. And today I'm going to give my extraordinary opinion on, are we enslaved to spend too much for Christmas? For holidays in general? Are we enslaved to, mentally enslaved to buy things that we don't need? That we don't want? I'm going to give you my opinion on these things. Let's start from the beginning here. Christmas just came. Thanksgiving just passed. What do we do? For Thanksgiving, we're buying all this food for this big feast. It's a time for family to get together, eat, have fun, have conversations, enjoy each other's company. And... Moments after Thanksgiving, because nowadays stores open at 6 p.m. When we're normally eating, the sales start, Black Friday sales, the um, the epic sales on technology. You can get a 50-inch Emerson TV for $397. And you're rushing out and you're fighting for these TVs when you were just sitting at your dinner table enjoying good conversation, good people, and good food. Are we enslaved to go buy these stuff? Are we immensely enslaved? Why do we do this? Then you got Christmas coming up. Then you got Christmas. And then right after Thanksgiving, you got Christmas and you're bombarded with the commercials, the um, magazines and the um, coupon books telling you all the sales and your kids can circle the toys they want that they didn't think of. You're bombarded with commercials and your um, co-workers and everybody's asking you, what are you going to get? Families asking for things. You're mentally trying to figure out what to buy your children. Are we enslaved that when holidays come up mentally, are we enslaved to go buy stuff that we don't need, we can't afford, and we're not going to use? I want to discuss it. I want to get my opinion on it. I believe, yes, we are. Think about it, my audience. How many of you out there right now, let me ask you a question. I usually don't dive into people's finances because it's none of my business, but today, I want to ask you a question, and you don't have to answer me, just think this to yourself, how many of you, right now, after the holidays, are sitting here broke, not just broke meaning you don't have a penny to your name, but you're in debt, you got credit card debt that now you got to figure out how to pay for, your bills are backed up because you um, robbed Peter to pay Tom, Or Rob, Peter, and Tom to buy Christmas gifts. How many of you out here today, right now, are experiencing that financial pinch? Because you went out and you had to have those deals. You had to buy those things because you just had to have it around this time of year. Just because it's this time of year, these holidays, you just had to have that new TV. You had to, your son just had to have a new video game. Your husband just had to have that new watch. Your wife just had to have that new diamond ring. You just had to have it, right? It couldn't wait. How many of you are just broke right now because of that? Then let me ask you another question. How many of you right now are discouraged, disgusted by these holidays? Not because of the joy and enjoying your family and good dinner, good conversation, good company, but because the pressure it puts on you both mentally and financially. How many of you are tired of feeling it? It's like we forgot what Christmas truly represents. I thought it was about Christ's birth. What does Christ's birth have to do with trying to shop deals, going into debt, and spending all of our money and not even be able to pay our bills throughout the year. What does Christ's birth have to do with us stressing ourselves out just for this time of year, for one day? We're going to spend the next six months trying to dig ourselves out of a hole that we only had one day to enjoy. Why are we mentally enslaved to pursue these things? 
Now let's talk about it. I'm going to give you my opinion on some of these things that we purchase, these sales that you get. You know, um, my dad works on TVs um, for a living. One of the things he does, he's a, he's uh, he fixes TVs and stuff. And one day I asked him, I said, what are the most common TVs that you see, flat screens that you see that you fix? Um, It's the cheap ones that people buy on Black Friday that don't even last them a year. And then when they find out how much, the, he tells me, once they find out how much the parts are going to cost for that TV, they say, Shh, the part costs more than what I paid for the TV. I'm not just waiting to go buy another TV. And that's exactly the point. That you go to Walmart, you go to these stores, and you get these Black Friday sales, you think you're getting a deal on TV, when in reality, you're going to get a TV that if you're lucky, it lasts you six months, and not even high quality. And why that same TV is on sale every single year? Because you're going to have to buy that TV for every single year to keep it. $397 every single year. For a TV. We're pressured into buying things because we're trying to keep up with the Joneses. We're trying to please our children who honestly don't care about it. You know what I realize as being a parent? Christmas is not about trying to make sure my sons are happy, my two sons are happy. Christmas is about me trying to make sure that I can sleep at night doing, knowing that I got them enough. You ever buy your kids gifts and... um? You look under the tree and you're like, you know, yeah, there's 10, but it just don't seem like enough. So then you just go out and you're just trying to buy random stuff just to make it seem a little bit fuller. Who was that for? Is it for your children or is it for our mental being? Is it for us? Then our children don't even play with the stuff. The stuff gets thrown into a toy box or something. But that debt don't go away. Oh, no, that debt don't go away. That debt stays. And you're probably saying, well, Alan the Great, what do you have against Christmas? What do you have against holidays? I don't. I don't have anything against it. I have something against people going to debt, people not being able to pursue their dreams or being able to take care of their family. That's what I have an issue with. I have an issue with people being mentally enslaved and being feeling like they're being forced into buying something they don't want and don't need. Think about it. Most of us buy our children stuff throughout the year. You buy your spouse stuff throughout the year. So when it comes around to holidays, we're scrambling and struggling to dig to find something that we can purchase for them. It's because we already got them everything. What else do we need to buy? What else do we need to purchase? All we're doing is forcing something out. Putting ourselves in debt. For what reason? We're enslaved. We see these commercials and our kids see them and they weren't thinking about that toy until that commercial and ran it ten times. That's called mental what is that called? They're manipulating you. They're enslaving you to think you think you have to have this. You have to have this. If I run a commercial ten times, you're gonna mentally start to believe I have to have this. We have to start changing the way we think. How many of us are going to a new year not with um, with financial security, but with hopes that we can accrue financial security, that we can basically make a different decision, a different choice to make our finances change? Well, here's a way of doing it. You got to start by making those choices. Now that Christmas is over, what do we got to look forward to now? We got Valentine's Day coming up. That's right, gentlemen. We got Valentine's Day coming up. You know what that means, right? Flowers, candy. You know, some women want that ring. They didn't get it for Christmas. Valentine's is your second option to buy that ring. Go buy expensive dinner. Go buy some expensive jewelry. Some stuff that no one's thinking about. How many times can you buy expensive jewelry? How many times can you buy a ring? Do your wife... Your girlfriend, do they eat chocolate on any other day? If you want to buy a woman flowers, here's my opinion. Here's my thing. Buy her flowers just because. Buy her flowers because it's Tuesday. Buy her flowers because, you know what? She's been working hard all week. She's been stressed out. She's been taking care of the family, washing clothes, cooking dinner, or whatever. Buy her flowers because, you know what? She just deserves it. You don't need a holiday 
to tell you to buy something for someone. You don't need someone to tell you when or you should buy something for someone. You don't need that stress in your life. Think about it. We all have enough stress in our lives. We don't need any extra. I'm not trying to be the holiday killer, but I'm going to be a realist because some people don't want to talk about it. You think it, but you don't want to say it because you're worried about what your family is going to say or what your friends are going to say. Well, here's my thing. I don't really care. I care about people. I care about my fans. I care about my family. I care about the people who are struggling to keep up with something and chase chase this unlogical thought that you have to keep up with the Joneses, that you have to buy this stuff despite that you don't need it, despite that your children don't want it, you are forced that you have to do this. Why we can't get back to the basics? Why we can't get back to what holidays were truly about? Why we can't get back to actually instead of buying a bunch of gifts for people who don't need it or who don't want it? How about taking some of that money and giving it to someone who does need it? Taking away that stress and putting that energy towards helping somebody that really needs it. Not just because it's the holiday season, but throughout the year they've been struggling. Struggling to, to make ends meet. Struggling to keep their lights on. Struggling to find a job. Struggling to feed themselves. Instead of trying to force yourself to find something to buy for somebody, why don't we take it back to using the holidays what it's really meant for? How about we start trying to help others? Help people at need. Start volunteering at shelters. If you want to buy something for somebody, buy a coat for a child that needs a coat. Donate so a person that needs a meal can have a meal. Or a person needs a place to stay, they can have a place to stay. If you need somewhere to dump your money, then dump it there. Give it to something or somebody they need it. Instead of buying your child 20 toys that's going to end up in the bin, why don't you start saving that money for a college education for them? I know. That's not appealing. Or to my dogs, that's not sexy. You know what I mean? It's not sexy to put that money in the bank account or try to save it or to try to help somebody need it. Because you can't go to work and you can't brag about that, right? We can't go to work and brag about the fact that when they ask, well, what did you do for Christmas? I can't go to work and say, well, I um, donated money to a shelter or I put money in um, a savings account for my child so when they can go to college. Or after they graduate college so they can have that money to buy a house or whatever they want to do. Start their own business. Maybe I I took that money and I knew a family that don't have enough to eat. So I bought them a holiday dinner or maybe a toy or two to make them feel their children feel better. To give them that moment that I feel throughout the year. But see, none of that's appealing, right? Because see, we, we can think to do that, but it's just not appealing to society because that's not how society thinks. And we have to go along with the wave of everybody going. We can't go against the grain. We got to go with the grain. And basically what the grain is saying is, we got to live up to this standard of buying these gifts for kids that don't really want them, don't really care about them, and then it's not going to play with them after this one day. We need to go buy a 50-inch TV that 11 months out of the year, you wouldn't think about, you didn't want, and you didn't miss. We gotta go buy a diamond ring that your wife don't care about. I mean, come on, people. It's 2017. And I'm starting off with telling y'all to wake up. It's not just about finances now. Let me go deeper than finances. See, what we need to do now is, you don't want to help somebody, fine. You don't want to go buy a person a, a meal or you don't want to donate to a shelter. You don't want to put in your family saving. Fine. Don't do that then. How about building your own business? Because I, I guarantee you, most of my listeners and most of the people out here listening to this right now are probably at a job that they hate. Doing something they hate. But have, at the same time, have something they love to do. And you ask them, why are you not doing it? It's because they'll tell you this. I don't have enough money to do it. You know, I hear that so often when I talk to people. The first it starts with the complaining about the job they have. They hate it. 
Then I ask them, what do you want to do? And they tell me what they love. Then it finishes off with them telling me why they can't do it. And it's because they don't have the money. Now let's take this and let's spin this back to Christmas and to holidays like um, Christmas and Valentine's Day or whenever you got to buy gifts for somebody. See, you can't figure out a way to make your dreams come true or find the money to invest into your business and get the things you need to, to build a business or create something that will make you happy or to do something that you love doing. But you can figure out a way to waste money on gifts for people who are not going to appreciate them, don't care about them, or don't want them. Or better yet, you don't need them. You see the way we're thinking and how enslaved our minds are? We're thinking backwards, people. It's 2017. Are we going to carry into a new year the same thoughts that got us in the position we're in today? Or are we going to wake up and say, you know what? It's time to make a change. It's time to change the way I'm thinking, what I'm doing. I got to make better decisions, better choices. It's time to me to look at that balance sheet. And see all the bad choices I made, the, all the bad financial decisions I made. And say, okay, this didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. And the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again, or doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So how about you stop being insane, look at that balance sheet, and tell yourself, I don't want to be insane no more. I don't want to look at my account and see the same financial behavior over and over again, and I'm looking for different results. I'm going to change that. I'm going to look at that balance sheet and say, okay, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to waste money on this. I'm not going to waste money on that. I'm going to take this money instead of wasting on gifts for people who don't care, want them, or need them, and I'm going to invest in something that's going to make me happy. That's going to bring, bring me financial security. That's going to make me, put me in a financial place where if I want to waste money on a gift, I can have that money to waste on a gift. And it doesn't affect my bills. It doesn't affect my livelihood. But also remember, the holiday season is not all about spending and catching deals. It's also about helping someone in need. And I promise you, one of the greatest feelings in the world it's not buying a new ring, a new watch, a new pair of shoes, a new toy, a new car, but helping somebody in need. If you are truly pure at heart and you have a heart, you will feel warmth that you never felt before when you're able to give somebody something. Something that you might took for granted every single day might be the greatest gift to somebody else. And it doesn't always have to be something major. Just the smallest gesture can change somebody's life. But you have to get out of that enslavement of your mind, allowing people to make you think and feel like, one, you're only thinking about yourself. Two, you have to have things that you really don't want or need. People, my listeners, it's 2017. It's time to change it. If you don't like your job, if you hate your job, I'm not telling you to quit. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm telling you is, if you hate your job and it's something you love, then you need to start working towards doing that, creating an opportunity to do that. Don't come at me and don't come at yourself with problems of reasons you can't. Erase the reasons you can't do it and come back at me and come at yourself with reasons you can. Don't tell me what you don't have. Tell me what you do have. Don't tell me what you can't do. Tell me what you can do. See, reverse your mind. Reverse that enslavement of your mind. If you can come up with money to buy a flat screen TV for Christmas and buy a bunch of gifts that you don't really need want, then you can come then you can come up with the finances you need to create your business, to start your own business, to live out your dreams. Whether it's buying a house, running a business, selling baskets, selling clothes, selling shoes, or selling flowers on the side of the road, whatever makes you happy. It's in your your destiny is in your hands. I hear people often say, I want more money. The money is already in your hands. The money, in fact, it's not in your hands. It's sitting right in front of you. All you have to do is grab it. But here's the problem with money. And I'll go deeper into this in another segment. But money is the one thing that does not come with instructions. What do I mean by it doesn't come with instructions? 
When you buy a VCR, a Blu-ray player, a TV, it comes with the owner's manual on what to do with it, how to work it. When you get money, there is no instructions on how it works. There's no instructions on telling you how taxes work, how taxes come out, when you have to pay taxes, how you have to pay taxes, how you should spend your money, how you should save your money, when you should spend your money, when you should save your money. There is no instructions on these things. Once again, I'll go deeper in this on another segment. But for the sake of this conversation, money does not come with instructions. So we abuse it and we use it in the wrong way. And people often say, I don't have enough money to live out my dreams, to do what I want to do. And what I, my rebuttal to them is, yes, you do. If you got enough money to support your needs or your wants for holidays, then you have enough money to support your dreams and your goals. So stop coming to me excuses and stop looking for reasons. Because I guarantee you, when holidays come, when Christmas come, when Valentine's Day come, I guarantee you, you ain't got them excuses on what you ain't got. Oh, you're going to find a way to get that money, to buy them gifts, to buy that TV, to buy that tablet, to buy those shoes, to buy that ring, to buy those games. You're going to get that money. Trust me. You're going to find a way, even if it means to not to half cut some of your bills, not to pay your rent, not to pay your electric. You're going to find those ways. So why don't you find, use them same tactics to increase your wealth why don't you use them same tactics so that you can live your dreams that you can build financial security so you can invest in yourself I'm not telling you to cut your bills I'm telling you if you can find money to buy gifts that you don't need or want for holiday season to give yourself stress for one day out of a year then you can find the money to open that daycare to open that store you have it. The money's there. Once again, you just have to reach out and take it. It's 2017, people. It's a new year. It's time to make new choices and stop allowing ourselves to be enslaved by things we don't want, we don't need. Take back your holidays, take back your happiness. Let's go back to the basics and remember what it's really about. Help the people that really need. Help your brother. Help your sister. Help your neighbor. Trust me. The warmth you'll feel in your heart will be much better than that flat screen that's only going to last you six months if you're lucky. Let's stop our mental slavery today. And let's take back our way of thinking. It's 2017. It's a new year. It's a new chance for us to create new opportunities to live out our dreams and get our happiness. And to love what we do. If you don't like your job, it's 2017. Then create that job or find that job that you do love. Find your passion and live it. Once again, this is the Ordinary People Podcast, where we talk to ordinary people with extraordinary stories. This has been the Extraordinary Opinion segment, and I want to thank you for listening. Remember, you can check out um, the Ordinary Opinion Podcast on YouTube, on my channel, Alan the Great. Please subscribe. If you have not done yet, done so yet, please subscribe to my um, podcast. We will not be sending you weird emails or bothering you or bombarding you with no such things. But what we will get is you'll be the first to find and see new episodes that, as they are uploaded and new chance to check out the Ordinary People Podcast. You'll be one of the first people to see them and listen to the Ordinary People Podcast. Also remember comments under the Ordinary People Podcast. Tell me if you agree with my extraordinary opinion or you disagree with it. Tell me if you like what I'm saying or if you have um, and if you have a subject that you would like to hear my opinion on, please comment on it. Also, you can if you don't feel comfortable with commenting or leaving a comment on YouTube, you always can um, leave me a personal one in my email. Ordinary People Podcast number 16 at gmail.com. Once again, it's Ordinary People Podcast, the number 16 at gmail.com. Send me a message. Let me know what you think about my podcast. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you agree with my opinion or disagree? I'll try to discuss it on the next show. 
if you leave your opinion or if you know someone or you or someone someone you know have an extraordinary story and would love to share it on ordinary people podcast please email me and let me know if you would like to be a guest on there your story can help motivate and inspire somebody else you never know sometimes you know the gift your experiences can be a gift to somebody else to help them through hard times or help them live or live out their dreams also check out other um other episodes of the Ordinary People podcast, including the Andre Ryder episode, Bruce Dorsey episode, and multiple Extraordinary Opinion uh, segments where I give my extraordinary opinion on subjects such as um, are there any good good women or men out there, um, the 2016 election, um, also um, other things that's on there. You can just go on YouTube, Alan the Great, the channel's Alan the Great on YouTube. Go on there and find all the segments. There's a lot out there in the... The Ordinary People Podcast is all about inspiring and educating. Once again, my name is Alan the Great, and I want to thank you for checking out the Ordinary People Podcast. Peace.